Euthanasia is something that vets we do fairly regularly. Uh, it's certainly considered part of the job. And one of the most common questions that uh, people would ask is, um, when's the right time to say goodbye to my pet? Today we're going to discuss that. So one of the questions that uh, a lot of uh, pet owners have asked me is, uh, Lennon, how do I know when the time is right, when it's the time's up, and how do I know that you know it's time to let go, it's time for my pet to cross the rainbow bridge? And um, we tend to discuss it in terms of quality of life. There are plenty of different ways to gauge the quality of life and uh, not all of them are easy because everybody has got the different uh, expectations on the quality of life. A lot of people, they like to use uh, pain as an indicator. That is, uh, it can be useful, it can be quite tricky. For example, if you have a cat that got ran over by a car and um, it is, uh, it's got broken ribs, broken, broken jaw, broken legs, then it is quite uh, obvious to say that, okay, the cat is in pain. And sometimes if it is uh, quite extreme, the owners may not choose to continue the treatment and decided to um, call it a day instead. And that is fairly obvious using pain as a sort of factor. Sometimes it's not so common, like uh, cases like uh, medical conditions, like potentially cancer or arthritis. The animal doesn't show overt pain, it's just a change in behavior. So, you know, they're still eating, they're still drinking, they are, you know, they're, they're able to walk uh, up and down, uh, but they're just not right. But it certainly isn't really a pain. So sometimes when pet owners, they want to use pain as a factor in those sort of situations, it's a little more tricky because it can be quite some time before they actually exhibit extreme pain, but it doesn't mean that they're having a good quality of life. So usually what I sort of uh, would be uh, advising or my sort of gauge to pet owners would be to ask them, what does your pet like to do? Example, if it is, is uh, if it's a dog called um, Rocky, and the answer, what does Rocky like to do? What is Rocky's behavior? And is Rocky able to exhibit what Rocky does right now? So if Rocky likes to, you know, get up, run around the garden for half an hour in the morning, then go for a one hour walk uh, twice a day, and um, you know, he can eat, he can poop, he can sleep without uh, waking up. He's still fairly with it, not having seen on dementia. So arguably, Rocky's life is still pretty good. So if it's able to do all this, then arguably as well, the quality of life is still present. But if he is not able to do things that what he usually does, like um, he is still eating, but he eats very, very slowly and he struggles. He is still able to walk, but he's no longer running around and he just spends most of the time sleeping. Um, and in some cases, they cannot even walk out to the garden to do a wee or a poop. Uh, they can still wee and poop like normal dogs, but they actually uh, find it hard to discharge those so-called normal duties. So it's arguable to say that Rocky is no longer doing what Rocky does, and arguably the quality of life is probably compromised because I do believe there's a big difference, a big difference between living and merely existing. Just because uh, we breathe and we eat and we do things doesn't mean that we're actually living because we can just be existing. Same for our pets, just because they are still breathing, it doesn't mean that they're really living. So. A uh, sort of a useful gauge which I found in the past that worked quite well is that I would get owners to actually write two columns of lists, okay? The one is the can-do list, okay? And the other section is the um, what if this happens list, okay? So the can-do list is things that, for example, using the same example of Rocky, what Rocky likes to do, Okay, so if he likes to walk for half an hour in the morning and one long walk later of one hour, he's able to jump up into the car, jump onto the couch, all these sort of things, the can-do list, list it all down, okay? And the um, what happens if, they happen, uh, if that happens list is something like if he is a wetting the house, wetting himself, if he's defecating in the house, if he is trying to jump up the couch but falls off, if he is not able to walk to his football, if he is not able to go for a walk, 
if he is not greeting uh, the uh, owners um, at the when they come home, which is his usual response. So that's his usual behavior. And now he's showing all this sort of uh, unusual behavior. So that's on the uh, on, on the second list of what happens when a dog starts doing that list. So once you have this two list, okay, you have a very objective way of gauging when is a good day, when is a bad day. Okay. Uh, before I go there, if you have multiple owners, for example, a couple, okay, husband and wife, uh, boyfriend and girlfriend, or just partners, just a couple that owns the dogs together or own the pet together, it is quite important for each person to come up with their own list, then sit down together, correlate the list, because it's not uncommon for one party to say that, oh yeah, it's a good quality of life, and another party to say, no, it doesn't, and those are disagreements, uh, which sometimes, you know, at the vets, there's not much we can do about it except to listen to both parties so it's quite important for uh, people in the, or, or the animal carers uh, in the same home to be sharing the same uh, song sheet to be singing from the same hymn so get both lists come together and form one list and it is that one list that's going to gauge the quality of life to look for how many good days how many bad days and this is the bit that uh, is can be quite useful for some owners so what i would advise usually is once you have your list of what you define as acceptable for Rocky to continue um, living because that means that he's doing well. And another list that says that if Rocky starts doing this, the argue with the quality of life is not good. Once you have those two lists over there, you will start marking good days and bad days. So a good day would be if Rocky does most of the can-do list and very little, if not none, of the other list. Okay, and what you do is that you put a little tick on a day, so it's a good day. So a bad day would be if Rocky does a lot of what he shouldn't be doing, okay, because he's struggling and not much of what he usually likes to do, okay, then you can mark it as cross as a bad day. Over time, if you do it over two weeks, okay, or, or yeah, over two weeks, okay, then you can gauge if arguably you have ten good days and four bad days, arguably the quality of life is still present. This gives you a very, very objective way of gauging what's the quality of life like. And as time moves on, you will see that if the days change, like now it's 10 bad days and 4 good days, arguably Rocky is not enjoying life more than what he is enjoying life. So arguably the quality of life is um, affected. And that may give you a better gauge of when to call it the right time. It is by making all this sort of very, very objective uh, gauge and some people, you know, they say they can see it in the eyes, but you go make this objective gauge, then you know that your decision is fairly um, unbiased or as objective as possible in this extremely subjective topic. So it is not uncommon for owners to say, Yes, I book an appointment, but suddenly uh, the dog was much happier again today, so they cancelled the appointment and they just delay it longer. And I have found in the past that more people the regret of not making a decision sooner than there are people who think they've made the decision too soon. So this is just my take on the quality of life. Please do comment below three things which you think are important to, to determine that your animal, your pet, still has good quality of life. I'll see you at the practice or I'll see you at the next live event. This is Amity. 